call this worship. With my voice I cry to you, Lord. I pour out my complaint. I tell my trouble before you. With my spirit is faint, I cry to you, Lord. For you are my refuge. Give heed to my cry, so that I may praise your name. I lay before you my sin, my hope, my failing, and my ambition. And I lift you to my heart for guidance and cleansing. Let us exalt you, O oh God, and the King. We will praise you.
they're, they're talking and, and his disciples come to him and they say, hey, Jesus, we got to send these people away because they need to get something to eat. And you know what Jesus said? You feed them. And they went, yeah, but, but we're not worthy. We don't have food. And they said, bring me what you have. And Jesus blessed the food. And what happened? They gave the cast of food out to all the people and there were baskets left over from five loaves of bread and two fish. And then the last one is, is the Apostle Paul was one who used to persecute Christians. He was actually going to Damascus to round up some Christians and God struck him blind and said, I need you. And he felt very unworthy too, but he ended up responsible for many of the books that we know in the New Testament. Many of the letters written by Paul. So what do we do? So sometimes God asks us, hey, you know what? You have a neighbor that maybe doesn't know about Jesus. We should probably tell them. And that can be scary because you don't know how somebody's going to react to that. But Callum, your, your song is perfect about Jesus loves me. It's what we're going to do is we're going to give them a simple message, right? So you can sing with me if you want. I'm going to do it real, real quick. Just one verse.
private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake that they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And so ends the reading of the scripture.
Dean and I thought we were real smart because we memorized that old song. It was la, 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 la. <laughs> I was not ready to la, la. <laughs> but it's so good to be with you. And I want to speak on certainties today. And one of the certainties I don't have in my sermon is there a lady here today by the name of April? Well, one of the certainties is April makes one of the best coconut cream pies that ever has been made. And uh, she can blame her mother for that. But, well, I, I don't know where she learned to do that. June Grove. June Grove. Well, my sister, who is with the Lord, made a similar one and painted and and Myrna invited us over to their house last Lord's Day and treated us to one of April's pies. And what a time it was. But from our text today in 2 Peter, I wanted to speak to you about certain days today. And the reason for that is there are so many uncertainties today. Uh, who would ever have dreamed that John MacArthur... Uh, pastor of Community Church in California was told if he had a service he would be in prison that a governor would have the power to violate the Constitution of our United States of America because you're not following the pandemic rules we're going to shut you down and that's not only happening in California, that's happening all over our country. Uh, the governor of New York City is closing the uh, synagogues during the most important time in the history of the Jewish people and threatening to imprison. To me, some people say, no. well, it wouldn't bother many people because they never darkened the church door anyway. But for millions of American people, it ought to grab your attention. A person who has the power to do that will have power to do other things. Filled with uncertainties. I've been in countries that one time, I forget one of them I mentioned, is Caracas, Venezuela. Uh, I was there, and being in Caracas is like being in New York City or Miami or Jacksonville, Florida, some major city in America. They had everything. And today, the word that we got from the pastors there is we are, find it difficult to find enough food to eat. Uh, we can't have open services. We can't announce them. We are confined. The missionaries from all over the world that work with the Indian tribes <coughs> And the Venezuelan jungles have been extracted from that country. And today they're starving and they rebelled, but all they had to fight against the armies was sticks and stones and bottles. That is critical. I have friends that I taught and I ate with them. I spent time with them in Nigeria. And then we got word uh, through reports that the churches of Nigeria, Nigeria is the most evangelized country in Africa. It's not only the wealthiest, but it was the most evangelized. But a former president of ours contributed money to the electing of a Muslim president of Nigeria who has proceeded to close the churches and persecute Christians and turn the radical Islamists all loose on the churches and kill believers right in their pews. That's not ultra right propaganda. That comes from a man that I sat beside and prayed with and cried with about a lost of Africa. These are uncertain times. And Oh, yes, God will have the last word. But I believe that we need, need to hang on to some things that are worthwhile, and we'll talk about them. In our text, it's amazing. I, 
It's hard to preach anything else once you read uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. Um, there's so many that don't believe this book. They ridicule it. They're like the old German when he heard this. He said, he doesn't believe it. And that's very common. But those that get a chance to hear can believe. And as I think of New Hope Presbyterian, I pray, that you, I pray that God will lead you in the choice of your pastor. Choosing a pastor is the most important decision you'll ever make in this congregation. Because choosing a pastor for a church is like choosing a father for a home. It is critical. And I don't have to tell you I'm old. My old friend in, in Haiti used to say, are you getting gray? And he'd write, we wouldn't see each other for about a year, and he'd write me, are you getting gray? Are you looking like a grand pair? I said, yeah, <laughs> looking like a grand pair. Anyway, it's, um, we've seen so much when it comes to choosing a pastor. We've seen them come in, and the church just thrives. Spiritual growth, numerical growth, financial growth. And then we have seen pastors with tremendous educations come in and just chase everybody off. Now, we don't want that. And someone said, well, what should I ask a pastor when, before he comes? I have one verse of scripture that I would tell him I want, want to hear you preach from this. I want you to preach from John 3.16. And on the basis of what you say will be my determining based, of course, you believe God's word and you are orthodox in your belief and all of that. But John 3.16 will be the key. And it will tell you what kind of a person will minister to you. He will care about the lost and suffering in your community. He will care about the well-being of each member of this church. He will teach you God's word in all of its fullness. And new hope will grow and thrive and be a strong witness for Jesus Christ. And God knows Southern York County needs that kind of a witness. You see, I happened to grow up in this area. I remember, I remember the many, uh, many, many people that were religious, but when it came to knowing Christ personally and having the dynamics of Christ operating in their life, we didn't see that. And so I yearn to see, I hope to live to see, not only this, this church fill this place, Fill a place of their own with people today that are sitting in darkness. And God can do that, and I trust that he will. In our text in 2 Peter chapter 1, uh, we have a more sure word, or for today's sermon, a more certain word. Unto which you do well if you take heed unto a light that shines in a dark place until the day star arises in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any isolated interpretation. Isolated from all other scripture. It's all blended together. The Old Testament is the New Testament revealed in types and mysteries and prophecies. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed in all of its fullness in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and God Almighty. And then he says, For this prophecy came not at any time by the will of man. A religious body didn't have a convocation and say we're going to write the Bible. No, it didn't come that way. Holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. We have a certain revelation. 
And when you think of the Bible, I want you to remember this. It's one of the certainties, and we'll mention it a bit more, but really at this time, it's the only revelation of the mind and will of Almighty God. And what a revelation it is. I've had the privilege of being in a lot of places throughout this globe. And one of the great confirmations of the truthfulness of the Bible is the effect that it will have upon people who believe it. I've seen people that if you would meet them and hear their story, you would not believe your ears. Let me tell you one. I had a conference in Egypt. We were in five cities. I was one team and two professors from Asbury Seminary was the other team. But I was one of the team. And this one fellow that came to the conference was really interesting. A real tall fellow, real dark-skinned Egyptian. And as we talked with them and ate meals with them, I would always ask them, how did you come to know the Savior? And he said, do you have 20 minutes? I said, of course I do. He said, I was a Muslim. And I was very unhappy. And I wanted to love God, my creator. But I didn't know how. And so he said, I asked God to show me what he's like and that I can know him. And he said, I had a dream. And he said, the dream was you are to go into the bathhouse in Cairo, Egypt. And on a window ledge, you will find a piece of paper. And this piece of paper will tell you how to know me. He said, it was surreal. He says, the next morning, I left. It took days to get to Cairo. He went to the bathhouse, and then that part of the world, you know, we, we're, we're, people say, well, we're white people, so that's not that, that's not the reason, but in America, you, you have a bathhouse in your home. But in countries some North Africa and throughout Asia, many places, you, there's a central bathhouse, and you want to take a bath, that's where you go. Well, anyhow, this man was told to go to the bathhouse in Cairo, and he went. He found, and he found a piece of paper on the ledge. It was the third chapter of the Gospel of John in Arabic. And he believed the message. And then he was able to get a hold. He found, he found people and God led him and he finally got a hold. And that's all he ever had. And it was amazing the truths that he had, that God had taught him. And all he had was a Bible. And I've seen that. I've given invitations in Hindu countries where if a person responds to Jesus Christ, they can never go home. If they go home, their relatives will see that they're killed. I saw young girls in their 20s come to Christ, I saw young men openly confess Christ knowing that they could never go home again, but the, the power of the word of God was so real. And then I could spend the rest of the morning of telling you the power of the word of God in the lives of men and women all over the world in some of the most difficult places. I often said, I said to Dini, I don't know how I got there, I said, I'm afraid the next invitation will be to Antarctica, but I didn't get that invitation. I guess I retired too soon. Well, anyway, let me talk to you about some certainties. I want you to hang your thinking on these certainties. Don't let anybody tell you any different. They're absolute. It's clearly found in the Word of God. And we've been talking about the first one, 
And the first one is the word of Almighty God. The only revelation of the mind and will of God to a lost people. We've already read uh, Peter's words. This prophecy came not any time by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Now, in our modern day, people say, oh, I, we need to be broad-minded. That group is the most narrow-minded group of people you'll ever meet in your life. They, they're not broad-minded. They're only broad-minded when they want to be unbelieving people. Second Peter, this is the only revelation of the mind and will of God. Are there any others? Of course. All kinds of things have been written. The, the Jehovah Witnesses had the Watchtower writings. The Adventists have hearts of gold given by Ellen G. White, who had a vision. God took her to heaven, she said, and, and he shined a light on one word, and it was remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Well, we do that as well, but we don't worship on the Saturday because the Lord Jesus arose from the dead the first day of the week. So, Scripture, it is, and there's all other uh, translations. The, the Watchtower Society has an interesting translation of John 1, 1. It says, in our Bible, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then in verse 13, the Word, the Logos, was made flesh and dwelt among us. The Watchtower Society's translation is, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was a God. Now, you English people, you know there's a little difference between the articles A and D. Well, there's one revelation. One, and that is the Word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is God breathed. And it's profitable for doctrine. It will tell us what to believe. It's profitable for reproof. It'll correct our belief. It's for correction. It will enable us to live right. For instruction, it'll teach us how to live. Why? That the man of God, the child of God, may be fully developed, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. In other words, God will use his word to enable you to realize your fullest potential as a child of God. The first certainty is the Bible. The second certainty is Christ alone. We read the text, and that was a beautiful experience on the Mount of Transfiguration. <clears throat> It's a good message for when you lose loved ones to find out what happens to them. On well, the Mount of Transfiguration, you remember those events? Peter, James, and John and our blessed Lord were there. And then there were two guys that had died here on earth hundreds of years before Moses and Elijah. And they conversed one with another. This was, and then Peter says, this is so wonderful, let's build some houses and just stay here. Well, that would have been a delightful time. But I'll tell you, it's wonderful. And then they heard a voice. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. There is only one Christ. John 14, 6 says, Come, uh, I am the way the truth and the light. No man comes unto the Father, not, not light, life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except by me. God made it that way because if you give a half a dozen ways, you'd get the wrong one. You can't miss. There was only one Christ. There was only one who went to the cross. There was only one that vacated the tomb who is alive forevermore. That is the certainty. It's the Bible, the first certainty. Our second certainty is Christ. The third certainty is grace. The grace of Almighty God. The acrostic. God's riches at Christ's expense. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, for by grace. This is the very character of God 
given to us who deserve the very opposite. For, the, for by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Christ only. And then Acts 4 and 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name given under heaven among men whereby we can be saved. That is the second certainty. The Bible only. Christ, the second certainty. Grace, the third, the third certainty. And then faith. A lot of times this word is taken rather, I don't know exactly how it is, but as long as you have faith, there has to be an object of faith you've already given that. But faith is the vehicle that conveys truth to our hearts. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. The more we read the Word of God, the more we study the Word of God, the more we practice the Word of God, the greater will be our faith. Faith alone, therefore having been justified, made just as if you had never sinned, now, by faith in what God has said to us. And then naturally, Ephesians 2.8 again, for by grace are you saved through faith. Faith is the vehicle that conveys grace to our hearts and lives. And then believe it or not, I'm going to give you the last one. We could talk to you folk all day long, but um, we won't do that. And it's something that is born and bred in Presbyterians because... Uh, most Presbyterians I have now are familiar with the Westminster Confession. The highest ambition of a man is to know God and enjoy and glorify God and know Him and enjoy Him forever. And this is the one, the last certainty. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. This is your life. Wherefore, therefore, whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Now what does that mean? To glorify God means in the strictest sense to make him known. That's evangelism. That was the last words our Lord gave. Go you into all the world and proclaim the gospel. And teach, baptize them in the name of the Lord Jesus and teach them to observe all that I've commanded you. In other words, evangelize and disciple. That's the task. And the highest ambition of a man is to do this, to glorify our wonderful Lord. And John 1 and 14 is very similar to the text we read in Peter. We beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now what happens if we put our faith and trust in him and rely upon these certainties? I'll give you a few things. First of all, they'll have peace with God. I had a little lady in the church we pastored, a wonderful little person, 86 years old. One Sunday morning, as I extended the invitation for people and asked them to pray with me to receive Christ, that little lady raised her hand. I thought, my, this person would have known the Lord all her life for years. She'd been in the church since she was a baby. And afterwards, she told me a, year, a couple of weeks later, one Sunday, she came out. She said, Pastor, I got something to tell you. She said, I'm not, a ship, not afraid to go to sleep anymore. You know, when you're 86, there's always that last night. And you get to say, do people think about that? Of course. I, every day I get is plus. Every day I live is a plus. Because you just don't know. I've had too many funerals of people 20, 30 years younger than me. What was shocking, one time I had a funeral and he was the same age as me. 
That's all. We have peace with God. We have forgiveness of sin. We have a reservation made in heaven for us. And we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in our lives. We have the command to occupy until he comes. All of this is found in the certainties that God has given us. Now let me ask you. I've preached to you a lot of times. I don't know how many, but I always will ask you this. I went in churches and out of churches. I was lost when I went in, and when I came out, I was lost. Of all the churches that I went to as a child, and I, I, I tried anyone I could get to, I was had a church real close to me, and I was there every Sunday. I was never asked. Nobody ever asked me, Chet, have you trusted Christ as your Savior? No. I went to a Nazarene church with a fellow who used, had a little 31 Chevrolet and he'd put six or eight kids in that little Chevrolet and we'd go to the Nazarene church in Delphi. Nobody said or said or said, Chet, have you trusted Christ as your Savior? I went to another church and went to another and finally, I just gave up. And for about five years of my life, I never darkened a church door. One night, I always picked up Dee. We were engaged, but we weren't, no, we were just dating. We weren't even engaged. I used to pick her up after work. And she got in the car one evening. She says, before we make any plans, we're going to church Sunday night. But we had never gone to church. But I wasn't against that. I didn't hate God. I won a debate in high school on as the Christian view of evolution. But anyway, we went to that little church. And the word was preached and the people sang like you do. At the close of the service, the pastor said, if anyone present has never trusted Christ as their Savior, and you'd like to trust him tonight, I want you to stand and come forward. That was the first time I was ever invited to come to Christ. Deanie did. She didn't ask me. She just took off like somebody was chasing her. <laughs> and I did too. I could spend the rest of the day telling you what God has done in my life since that night. Don't assume that you can't remember a time and a place when you personally invited Jesus Christ to come into your heart and life. You know the best time to do it? Right now. Let me pray with you before we continue our time of worship. And if you've never received Christ, so I'm not judging you. I don't know. But I don't want you to be like me. No one ever asked. I'm going to pray the same prayer that I prayed over 65 years ago. If you have never trusted Christ personally, you can pray this prayer with me this morning. Will you do that? Dear God in heaven, I want to confess to you that I am a sinner and I have broken your laws and I've come short of your glory. Will you forgive me personally of all my sins? And Jesus Christ, will you come into my heart and my life and save me? For I want to confess with my mouth that I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for me and that he arose from the dead for me. And this Sunday morning, here on October 11 in New Hope Presbyterian Church, I receive by faith, the Lord Jesus.
Jesus Christ as my Savior. bowed and our eyes closed as a testimony to your own heart. If you prayed that prayer with me, would you, unashamed and unafraid, let me know as a confession from your own heart and life. Yes, Jeff. Yes, Pastor. I prayed that prayer. Would you let me know by a raising of a hand? Anyone? Yes, 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 yes. God bless you. Yes, 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 sir. God bless you and others. You may put them down. I just thank the Lord for good people making sure that you trusted Christ. And God's word says, these things, and this is the record that I have given to you. That he that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son hath not life. And these things have I written unto you that believe that you may know you have eternal life. What I, else I want you to do, I want you to tell your mate, your mom, your dad, your sister, just tell anybody that today, in the service at New Hope Presbyterian Church. I personally trusted Christ and settled it once for all. May God and his grace bless you in marvelous abundance. Father, just seal this message and these decisions in the hearts and lives of this people. In Jesus' name. Let's continue our worship by singing 504, We have a story to tell to the nations, and do we ever. Let's stand and sing that, and I want to hear you dear folks sing that song.
worship and remain standing as we recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended in heaven. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended in heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father of all. From hence he shall come to judge the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Will you join me as we pray? Father in heaven, we bow before you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks for the privilege to open your word with this wonderful people, to share the truths of Almighty God, the truths that change lives, the truths that transform the lives of people, the truths that have sent people to the ends of the earth with the message of the everlasting gospel. We thank you for the privilege of sharing this. And our Father, we bring New Hope Presbyterian Church and its people to you, asking that they all shall become the recipient of the exceeding riches of your grace, your tender kindnesses, your loving of fellowship, and yes, the amazing grace that can transform and encourage and establish lives. Our Father, we would pray for those of the number that may be afflicted and are not with us, may the touch of your hand be upon their bodies. We pray that the healing hand might be there as well. For those who are facing other trials and testings, may your grace sustain them, and may they be upheld by the power of your own might. And our Father, uppermost in my mind, and I'm sure in the mind of many, as new hope faces the future and the choice of a pastor, lead them to a man of God who will love the word, will love the lost, and will love the people of God, and will serve him with all of their hearts. Father in heaven, may you in your grace be pleased to grant the answer to this prayer. Father, now we will trust you for good things for this church and this people as we face the future. And we will bow and give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. For we pray in the name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will come. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I believe we will sing. Is there an offertory? Yeah, we're in Yes. Please do. You may be seated.
one of the things that will help you is to tell others. Tell your mom, tell your dad, tell your sister, tell everyone. Tell the leaders of the church here. God bless you. Now, our Father, as we leave this place, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God our Father, may the fellowship of the precious Holy Spirit be with us all until Jesus comes. God's wonderful people said, Amen. Amen.